Happy Sunday, everybody. Good Sunday. Palm Sunday. Blessed Sunday. Uh, it's not snowing. At the moment. At the moment. Uh, on this beautiful April. So uh, life is good. But uh, love y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all being here. <coughs> Another blessed time to come in the house of the Lord. Another blessed time to come worship his name. Another blessed time to come hug some neck, shake some hands, and uh, be a blessing, be a witness to one another. So, again, I'm glad to see y'all this morning. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, it's a blessing, and it's an honor, and I love each and every one of you. Um, next week is Easter. We don't have a Sunday night service, but we will uh, We'll have communion next week. And uh, when I do communion... Uh, I'll go over the uh, expectations and things like that. Um, communion is something that's sacred, something we do in remembrance of what he did for us. And uh, like I said, we will be partaking in that next week. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, my good buddy, uh, Brother Hugh Miller, will be here tonight at 6 o'clock. Have a good time with him. He, uh, their church had revival this week, and it was a blessed time. And uh, looking forward, brother, you being here tonight. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to have prayer request. I'm going to pray for Josh. Uh, Josh not here this morning. He's under the weather, not doing well. Uh, sinus mess. Saw him yesterday. He was cut, coughing and sneezing and all kinds of hurtings. So uh, keep him in your prayers. Um. Who else got prayer? Oh, remember the Blevins family, particularly John and uh, Susan this morning. They both um, have health issues. Asking God's blessings on them. Charlene? Charlene? Charlene, thank you. Yeah, remember Charlene and her family? Caden. Um, remember Mr. Caden? Yep. Emergency personnel. Yep, remember the EMS folks, the hospital, the Remember the teachers and the military and the children. law enforcement. Remember the children folk. Good seeing kids this morning. Uh, remember the church and ministries. Uh, I cut up your prayers uh, just for life in general. <laughs> and uh, just day in, day out, devil. So try to be a good witness. Uh, Anybody else this morning? Praise the Lord. Uh, remember the church uh, water situation. We got some plans in effect, um, but we're still waiting on some stuff. So uh, it's all in God's timing, and uh, God hears our prayers. It will work out. So remember Les. Remember Buddy Les. Yeah, he's got some back issues. Good fellow like Les. Remember him? He may have spoke prayer request. Remember the lost. And remember all of our individual families. Please do that. Any unspoken this morning? Unspoken prayer? Let's go, Lord, to prayer with. Join us if you'd like. <coughs> Up the altar. Pray there. Let's go, God. For the throne, of the Lord. Ask for blessings. Lord Jesus, we love to praise you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you, Lord God, for another time, opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed place. Thank you, Lord God, warm place. Come worship you, Jesus. Lord, you've been so good to us. Thank you for grace, love, mercy. Thank you for Palm Sunday and all the means. Thank you for this time and this occasion, Lord God. You see the needs. Lord, the need of salvation, the need of healing the need of your deliverance, the need of your mercy and grace, the need of your strength. Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to touch all the needs. Bless us as we go forth, Lord. Ask Lord, bless service. Bless all and be honored to your name, Lord God. And bless this church, Lord. Help us to go forth. Help us, Lord, to be a lighthouse for you, Lord God. Help us to grow the kingdom and help us, Lord, to encourage one another. We love you, Jesus. In my name, amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, yes, Lord. Okay. 
got a blanket. Okay, well that's cute. How you doing? <laughs> got a blanket up here. We'll sing this music. Sing and blanket. <laughs> Page 333. 333. <laughs>
For the Spirit has control, Jesus satisfies my soul. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides. Hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. For the Comforter abides with me. There's no thirsting for the things of the world. They've taken wings. Long ago I gave them up and instantly. All my night was turned to day. All my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, amen. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. For the Comforter abides with me. Anybody else have a song or anybody else have a testimony, anything you'd like to share this morning? Let's make sure everybody's got a chance and an opportunity to do or say something for the Lord. It's always important to me. I, uh, think about the church <clears throat> I think about the folks I see I think about being in the ministry I think about what it means to be able to share a witness or to tell someone about this walk we have in this world and what I would like for every one of us, young and old, is to remember. Um, you'll hear more about remembering next week when we, we do communion. But uh, I like for us to remember these times. I like for us to look around to see who is here and who is here. I'd like to look around and think about the folks we wish were here. I'd like to think about the folks that used to be here. Uh, I think about the folks that are here now and thankful for you. But we need to be a constant witness. We need to be a constant light. And we need to give praise always for all he's done for us. And I know uh, this might sound a little odd to you, but I will watch my sermons on YouTube and I'll pick up on things and I wonder, you know, it's like, how did that go over? Or did I really explain that well? Or sometimes I'm just looking for things. And I know sometimes I say a lot of, I say some things, sometimes I'm repetitive in some things. And I know one thing that I am repetitive in is that I want to be thankful. And one thing I am repetitive in is I want to thank you guys. But being thankful is very important to me. And being thankful, I think, is something that's very important in the walk of a Christian. Uh, we live in a dark world. We live in a hard time in the eyes of uh, the secular. They think they've got this down. They think they're ahead of us. And it's a dark day when you see everything else but Jesus get promoted. But I'm thankful for being this time. I'm thankful for being this day. I'm thankful for being this age. And I'm thankful for my walk with the Lord. And I'm thankful for one more opportunity to come praise his name. One more opportunity to preach the word. One more opportunity to say that, Lord, I stood up, said something for you. And I was trying to help up. So, appreciate you guys again. Um, but remember those. The ones that are here, the ones that aren't here, the ones that used to be here. Keep them all in your prayers. All right? That's important. 
need to keep praying. Uh, this morning got four questions. It just simply says four questions. I got four questions for you this morning. The first question I got is who are you going with? <coughs> who are you going with? We're going to look at Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter and the third and fourth verse. <coughs> the third and fourth verse of Deuteronomy 20. And it says, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And I asked you this morning, who are you going with? Who's going with you? I tell you, have you ever been in a scenario where you had to go by yourself somewhere to try to take care of something? You was unsure where you was going? There's this uh, company, <coughs> and these companies are wide spread. And these companies are called hospitals. And if you want to get old Tim lost, you take him to a big city hospital and try to get him to a certain place. I've been to big city hospitals down in Winston, and I've been to big city hospitals down in Charleston, South Carolina, where we used to live. And I, I felt like a blind man in the desert trying to hunt water. I mean, these things are laid out. How do I get to room 524? And they'll look at you like, well, which bill? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I want to get to 524. I need to go to room 524. Okay, well, who are you, who are you looking for? All right, you tell them so and so. I was like, okay. Well, what you need to do, what you need to do is, first of all, you're in the wrong building. And then... <coughs> When you leave this building, all right, you're going to go across that, across that parking deck, all right, and you want to look for, for an elevator that says J, all right? Now, get on the J elevator, and you want to go up three floors. Now, if you go up four floors, it'll make you turn around. So, go up three floors, okay? When you get off that elevator, I want you to turn left. Now, you're going to go a good ways. You're going to go a good ways, all right? And then when you go good ways, you'll eventually see another set of elevators, all right? You want to take the third elevator, okay? Don't tell you how many elevators there. You want to take a third elevator, all right? And then when you get on that third elevator, go up to the fifth floor, and that'll be the 500s. And then when you get there, stop by the nursing station and ask them if you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I think I'll just call her. I see you later. Yeah, I was just. <laughs> I, no. Just bad directions, all laid out, not knowing where you're at. You're by yourself. I feel that way in this world sometimes. I do. I'll watch TV. They're telling me that I need this, I need that. If I want to be happy, I need to buy this thing. If I want to lose weight, I got to buy that thing. If I want to have a nice car, I can only buy this brand because it's the best car around. Two minutes later, you got a whole bunch of people like, I don't know, they ain't got no idea what they're talking about. You need to buy this car if you want to be happy. And if you buy yourself, you plumb get lost. But see, God don't want us to be by ourselves. Deuteronomy 20 and 4, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. God, we're made to go with God. We're not made to be by ourselves. That's right. We're made to worship. We are made to praise the Lord. We are made to be part of the flock and Him the great shepherd. My oh my. You ever watch them uh, like Wild Kingdom or some of them National Geographic shows and They'll show, they'll show these big herd of animals, and, and they'll be like, you know, 
and, and here's old, here, here's them lines up on the hill, and they just wait for that one to start tragging. They wait for the weak one to miss, you know, be out of the flock. Yeah. They wait for that slow one. Boy, I'd be in trouble. They wait for that slow one. The flock's just running along, and that slow one doesn't catch up, and then all them lines will show up around that one and do harm and devour that, that one. That's why we got to stay together. That's why we need the Lord to start with. Right. That's why we need church. That's why we need good church family. That's why we need to read the Bible. That's why we need to pray. That's why we need to deny our flesh. These things will keep us tied together. And God's telling us he's going to go with us. So I'm asking you this morning, are you struggling this morning? Are you having difficulties this morning? Are you wondering what's going on this morning? I'm going to ask you, who are you leaning to? Who are you looking at? Every time I have troubles and sorrows and struggles, I'm usually leaning on myself. And I'm thinking, I can take care of this. Right. Mm -hmm. Got humble down. Lord, I need you. Lord, help me, Lord. When you and I realize our significant need of God, our lives will improve. In the eyes of the world, it might not. But this life will improve for you if you understand and you seek God and you cling to him. Why are you going? I got another question. Why are you going? We're all going somewhere. I went to church this morning. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home to eat. I'm going to come back tonight. I'm going to go to work tomorrow. We're always going somewhere. Why are you going? 1 Corinthians 9, 23 through 27. Why? Why do we do the things we do? And it says, 1 Corinthians 9, 23, it says, And this I do for the gospel's sake, the sake of the good news. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You ever watch those Olympics? You ever seen those sprinters? You ever seen those fast folks? I look at them. I'm not one of them, but I look at them. You ever see these folks? These folks, they, they spend years learning how to run. Okay? Now, anybody that's ever been to a playground, they'll be like, why, you know, them kids know how to run. That's true. But I'm talking about these folks are trained. Okay? Now, you take a kid... You take a kid to the playground. I mean, <laughs> them arms are swinging, buddy. Their body's going about five different directions and just momentum's carrying them in one way. But their arms back here, their legs out there, <coughs> their butts back yonder, their heads this way. They're all over the place. They're loosey goosey. Loosey goosey. You watch them Olympic people? I can try to demonstrate. I ain't about to run. But, buddy, I mean, they're like, they're like sticks. They're, I mean, I mean, their elbows are in. They're not flailing. Their knees are high. They're hitting big old strides. I would try that, but I'd fall off hurt myself. Somebody would have to pick me up, and I don't want that to happen. But they train. And they're very disciplined. This is how we do this. We do this. Uh, I talked to somebody one time about fighting and boxing. <laughs> 1 
first thing they said is tuck your chin. Now I'm sitting there thinking to myself, am I going to headbutt that dude? <laughs> we may tuck my chin. I'm thinking, I, you know, I'm going to hit him. Show me how to hit somebody. Tuck your chin. Like that. Okay? I found out. Me and, bro, me and brothers laughed about this. It's like, quit leaving with your face. It's like, I mean, if you go into someone like, I mean, you better get, you better get way late, okay? You never see a boxer do that. You see a boxer walk up to you like that. That boy's about to lose, okay? Tuck your chin. It has nothing to do with actually hitting anybody. You tuck your chin. You protect your neck and your jawline, and you don't get cold cock. You're like, down. Keep your eyes. Why am I telling y'all this? I'm telling y'all this because we are in a spiritual fight. And we're fighting against our flesh. We're fighting our thoughts. We're fighting against this world that don't want anything to do with Christ. We need to train ourselves to fight this fight. We don't fight, we don't fight against flesh and blood. But we do run a race. And what does it say? It says in that 27th verse, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection. Woo! Lest by any means, when I have preached others, I myself should be a castaway. Listen to what he's saying. I bring myself under subjection. I can't tell you guys to read the Bible and pray if I'm not reading the Bible and praying. You see? I can't tell you guys that we need to look to God if I myself am not looking to God. Sometimes I've been in churches. Sometimes I've been in places. It's like, well, I'm supposed to be paying attention to what's going on. And my mind starts wandering. Then you get asked a question, and and I try. I, I've got a generic look of. Don't look too obvious, but just kind of a small smile and like, act like you know what's going on. You might be clueless, but at least look the role. And I'm telling you, self, we got too many people looking the role in this life. Preacher Tim thinks I'm doing good. My family might think I'm doing good. But the Lord knows what's going on. Where's your heart at? Where's your intentions? I have this talk about once a week with somebody, at least. Different people. And I'll ask them, what's the intentions of your heart? I'll have people come up to me. It's like, am I doing the right thing? Or, or is this, you know... Is this how I'm supposed to be? Or, or what did God mean when this? And I'm like, God wants to know the intentions of your heart to start with. If I'm trying to do the right thing, that's a great place to be. Okay? Because through prayer, through his spirit, through guidance, through church family, through all those things, you can get leaned into, you know? You'll get taught to tuck your chin. You'll get taught to keep your elbows in if you're running. You see? It comes through learning. But why am I going? I'm going because I want to receive a crown that's incorruptible. I don't want nothing of this world because this world's going to fade. It seems like every week or every other week I know somebody that passes on. You either see the newspaper or you hear about it or a friend says so-and-so passed on or, and all these things. And I always think to myself, did they know the Lord? I always think to myself, were they saved? Always. I want you and I to have that incorruptible crown. That's why we're going. That's why we're going. 
I want to escape hell. I want to see my Jesus. I want to see my loved ones that have gone on and were saved. I want to live in eternal glory. I want joy and happiness and peace life everlasting. That's what I'm seeking. If I was seeking the things of this world, I would not be standing before you. I doubt a church would be a place I would be. <clears throat> I would be seeking my own life, my own pleasures, my own things, my own <laughs> desires, my own goals. And I got a feeling that y'all would be in the same boat. I appreciate you guys being here. Anybody watching this later on, appreciate you watching this. You're taking time. You're seeking and searching for something that's incorruptible. That's <clears throat> why we are going. I want that good thing. I want that incorruptible. I want that thing that will never fade. I think about Michelle. I think about my mama. I think about preacher friends. The, the Frank Dixons and the Frank Joneses of the world who touched my life and have gone on. And Alex, I wonder, I wonder where, I wonder how they and what they and what's going on. Because I ain't got a clue. Because I'm still in this corruptible casing, this flesh. I have no idea what's on the other side beyond other than what's said in the scripture. But to experience those things. One day we'll experience those things, Dennis. One day James will see Mom. One day, honey, we'll see Pops again. Look forward to that day. If Hannah has a Volkswagen dealership, Pops is up there talking to him. I'm going to let you know that right now. All right. <coughs> Look forward to seeing that man again. We're blessed. Yeah. We're blessed. Let's seek for those things that are incorruptible. Let's keep our bodies into subjection. Got two more questions. Go, go read uh, 14 verses here out of Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 32 through 46. Matthew 25, 32 through 46. <laughs> What should I be doing and what are the consequences? These are the two last questions. I've asked you who you're going with. I've asked you why you're going there. Now i got two more questions. What should I be doing? And what are the consequences? There's consequences for all things. They are. The other day I did not set my alarm clock. The consequences was I slept in. And then the reverse happened. I had day off and did not turn off the alarm clock. There that thing is blaring at me. Why am I waking up when I don't have to? I was semi this room. There are consequences to our actions. Is what I'm saying. What should I be doing? Well, Let's look here, Matthew 25 and the 32nd verse. And it says, And before him shall he gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the, his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. 
Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee hungered and thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer him, saying, Verily I send unto thee as much as you did unto the least of these, you did it unto me. Hear that this morning. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteousness, but the righteous into everlasting life everlasting. Let me read that 46 verse again. And it says, And these shall go away into the everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Hear that this morning. What should I be doing? What are the consequences? You ever been kind to someone that it was hard to be kind to? Mm -hmm. Have you ever reached out to someone who was unreachable? Have you ever tried to help someone no one wanted to help? Have you ever went to those that you know you couldn't <laughs> give anything back to and tried to help them? This is what I was talking about this morning. What should I be doing? We got lives. We's busy. We work. We got responsibilities. We got to take care of our own. We got bills to pay. I get all that. I get all that. I do. I get all that. There was a man who used to come to this church, uh, Gene Brooks, Sunday night. He'd sit somewhere like where Terry's at. And Gene was a wonderful elderly man. And if Gene had anything, he had candy. This was a candy dispensing machine, okay? I wonder if he died of diabetes, to be honest with you. I, 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 think, I don't think it was diabetes, but this guy had more sugar on him. He always had candy on. And he loved giving candy to the kids, particularly. He'd hand out candy to everybody. He was one of those, the uh, Church of the Blessed Rapper. You ever heard? You got. Sound like a fire in the background. It takes 30 seconds to do this quietly, then the five seconds to just rip it off. So I sit there. I sit behind people in revivals, and I swear I thought they was on fire because they just sit there all the time. They go from one piece of candy to the next. Rattling, rattling, rattling. But he was a candy giving machine. And that's a good legacy. He didn't have, I, I don't remember him being. Like mega rich or anything. But what he had, he gave. Mm -hmm. He's generous. Let's be generous with what we have. You may not have much monetarily. Be generous with your time. Be generous with your actions. Hug a neck, shake a hand, pat a back. Make someone laugh. Make someone smile. Greet someone. I, I, I've been in churches, and uh, I was discussing this with my brother recently. Uh, I, I feel like we've got friendly folks in this church because I've been to churches where I, I, I no, 
they kind of look at you when you come in. It's like, you know. And uh, me and Sarah went to a place back uh, back around December. Big place. A friend invited us to. They were having this big production. And I looked at her about 15, 20 minutes while we were there. I said, if it wasn't for so-and-so inviting me, I'd already left. There was like three, two, three hundred people there. No hi, no glad you're here. Nothing. And I'm like, my goodness, is this a church? We need to be friendly. We need to give of our time, give of our heart. Be kind to the folks. And what happens when you and I are kind? We're going to be able to stand before the Lord. Lord, I was kind to these people. You ever gave to the Goodwill or to the Allegheny Cares or to any kind of home? You ever gave, gave stuff? Donated clothes? Donated food? That's giving. You ever help someone out? You ever bought a meal for someone? Have you ever uh, just... <laughs> This happened. Uh, me and Jane, we were uh, we were uh, we were going somewhere Wednesday. We were going somewhere Wednesday. We pulled up on Glade Valley Road. Somebody had pulled up on the Glade Valley Road off of 21, and they pulled probably 100, 200 feet up Glade Valley Road. <laughs> they were heading up Glade Valley Road, and Jane's like, "Should we ask them if they need help?" And like, yeah, go ahead. And James was driving, and I rolled the window down, and like, y'all all right? And the dude was like, is this the way to Sparta? He's pointing up Glade Valley Road. He's like, is this the way to Sparta? And I kind of looked at him like, no, 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 back up and head that way. Go about five miles or so, you'll be there. All right? Had a big old grip. I'm flying her up. God bless us out. Big old, big old grin, happy. Now, that didn't cost me a dime. That didn't cost brother a dime. Brother's one initiated. It wasn't me. He was driving. He could have floored it. Hawked the horn. Get on the side of the road, Goober. <laughs> didn't do that. We stopped. Okay? Go that way. Help out. It don't take a lot of effort. But it reflects, and I know oh, he's up there bragging on him and his brother. He's a great guy. That ain't what I'm saying. <laughs> that ain't the point. I'm saying, Miss Alex has helped me a bunch over food. Oh, buddy, let me tell you about Miss Alex. I got to tell you a scenario. I went to a place called Walgreens, and my wife has points <laughs> at Walgreens. <laughs> And the husband's been instructed, don't you dare ever spend the points at Walgreens. I got asked one time if I wanted to take $5 off of something. I looked at the woman and I said, are you trying to get me divorced? <laughs> no. I ain't touching them points. I know not to do that. So it was this week. Miss Alex over at Food Line, I went and got uh, it was uh, it was some donut holes that had been put on special and a gallon of milk. And I'm sitting there and, and, and her and her wonderful self checked me out and everything. And she looked at me. She ripped out the receipt. She said that was free. Then as I had flashbacks of Walgreens, I knew right then I'd messed up. I just try and get milk and, and some of them on. I mean, I will. I did not want to spend anybody's points. And I asked Alex. I said, "Oh, did I do something wrong?" And I'm like, "Now I gotta go home, tell honey I'm spending her points. Oh, it ain't gonna be good." She's like, "I seen that for Thanksgiving. You both go out." I was like, "Oh no, no, oh, close to him." Come to find out, it was great. Everything was fine. She said that happens occasionally. You did good. Praise the Lord. There's peace in the valley. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Living a good life. 
Well, I had to add that Psalm 23, Mercy and Grace, buddy. They were following me that night. Woo! All was good. My wife is extremely kind to me for everybody that thinks I'm, 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 I'm embellishing this. You know, but, but I do know not to mess with the Walgreens. But now that I do know. But, and when I got that free milk and then free donut holes, I was like, whoa! I'm going to be held accountable for that. What are the consequences of my actions? Consequences, it turned out good. Life's good. It all went well. See, that's what the Bible wants. That's what God wants. That's what Jesus wants. That's what true church folks want. We want you to go out in this life and do well. And when you and I do well in this life, we're going to make the lost people give them good directions. They'll be happy. We're going to go home with a free gallon of milk and some donuts. Make fat boy preacher happy. Life's good. You see what I'm saying? These consequences come back to us. But it's also telling us if we don't do these things, if we're part of that goat crowd, you see, he separated, he put the sheep on the right. He's protected. He put the sheep on the right side. These are, these are my loved ones. You others on the left. It says right there, everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment. I don't want this. What should I be doing? I should be being good to the poor, helping the hungry, taking care of the stranger, the sick, visiting those people that ain't got visiting, give clothes to people that ain't got clothes. Helping people out, give a drink, give water, people ain't got it. Helping folk out. And when I do these things, we ain't getting into heaven by our works, but being saved is going to change your work and your outlook. There ain't been a day in time I would. I, <laughs> I was told to give a lecture or, or, or some advice about not stealing stuff this morning. You know what I was thinking in the back of my mind? I used to steal stuff. Yeah. And now here I am telling them not to do it. Why? There's a change. Something changed in my life. There's the spirit. There's salvation. There's redemption. There's valuable teachings in the scripture. Do the right thing. And when you and I do the right thing, it's going to show up in our life. And we're going to be counted amongst the sheep on the right side. And it says right there, oh, looking forward to this. It says, oh my, we're going to escape the everlasting fire that's prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, we're going to walk 34th verse. We're going to inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I want that kingdom, Sydney, I want that kingdom that's prepared. I'm going to leave you with this. There's a simple teaching called repent. Repent means to turn. There's some things we all, A-L-L, preacher Tim included, there's things we need to repent from. It could be our thought life. It could be our actions. It could be our attitude. It could be our daily habits. It could be the things we're clinging to. I want us all to go to God. I want us all to look to the Lord. Lord, I want you to look within my heart. Lord, I want you to look within my mind. I want you to look within my actions. And Lord, I want you to point out those things I need to be stopped doing. I want you to point out those things that are hindering me from having a closer walk, being a bigger blessing in this life. And again, it ain't salvation by works, but I want my works, I want to please my spiritual father. I want to be a blessing to my dear wife. I want to be a blessing to this church. I want people to say, that's a good man of God right there. Lord, look into me and help me, Lord. 
Lord, there's four questions this morning. Where are you going? Who are you going with? Where, why are you going? What should I be doing and what are the consequences? I want everybody in here. I want the folks watching later. I want everybody, I want myself obviously included. I want us to inherit that kingdom. I want us to inherit the kingdom of God. I want us to stay far away from that everlasting punishment. And it's my hope and desire that each and every one of us, hearts clear, minds clear, saved by grace, his sacrifice going on to heaven. Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, we love you. You're good to us, Lord. You're the Lord, Lord's King of Kings. You're the great I am, Lord God. You're the only one deserving worship and praise. We thank you this morning, Lord God. You see everybody in this room, Lord God, this sanctuary. You see the ones looking, Lord God. Lord, give us the courage. Lord, give us the wisdom. Give us the instructions, Lord God. Let go of those things we need to let go of, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to walk more close to you. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. Lord, we need your grace and mercy, but help us, Jesus. Lord God, you know the hearts of everyone here. Lord God, if they be anybody here need salvation this morning, let this be the day of salvation. Lord, if they be anybody who need prayer this morning, let this be the day. Lord, we'll come together and pray. So, Lord, let them come. Lord Jesus, let them come, Lord. Lord, this morning, you know the hearts and the intentions of everyone here. I ask you, Jesus, to help us, Lord, this day and bless us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for touching our life, Lord Jesus. You're good to us, Lord. And again, Jesus, bless each and every one of us and help us to go forth in thy name and thy way. In thy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Y'all are a blessing to us. Uh, Hugh Miller be here tonight. Please come back. And uh, we'll have communion next week. Appreciate Appreciate Ms. Arm over here. God bless your mom. <coughs> Love you. Appreciate everybody came in this morning. Thank y'all very much. Anybody got anything before we close this morning? Anybody? Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, I ask you again, Lord, bless us on our way out. Help us, God, again, to do and be all we do be for you. We give you praise and we love you and worship you. In thy sweet holy name. Amen. God bless y'all and thank y'all. Love you.